I, I wonder whether or not this is a market after yesterday's price action that saw a decided downside that indicates that we could see more downside ahead. Great to uh, be with you, Dominic. So for, for us, the, what the market is telling us, uh, especially with these recent movements, is that I think the market is realizing this is not an Armageddon, right? The consumer seems to be in relatively good shape. If you look at Cyber Monday sales, they hit a record of 11.3 billion. And uh, if you look at, uh, you know, tech is laying off workers, but at the same time, leisure and hospitality is gobbling up workers, keeping unemployment at a historic low of 3.7%. And this recession, if any, is Fed-induced. And Paul has indicated that he's going to be relatively accommodative. So we are of the school of thought that we feel that this market is probably going to be range-bound over here. But we will see opportunities, and we will also see vulnerabilities. Uh, opportunities is what I want to focus on. We, we kind of understand what the vulnerabilities are right now. They're tied to rates. They're tied to growth prospects, recession, and some of the companies that don't do as well when interest rates go higher. Opportunistically, Adele, if you look at where things have shaped up, there's an argument to be made that a lot of the momentum value parts of the sector, like energy, have run a lot. Are they still values? Meanwhile, many of the growth companies have sold off tremendously. Technology stocks, big tech, media, and telecom, are they now value stocks? How exactly, as a uh, stock picker, a portfolio manager, are you supposed to kind of distinguish between the two? What is value and what is growth? So, uh, so we, we're seeing a lot of opportunities here. Uh, definitely, we agree that the high growth areas of the market, there is vulnerability there. Uh, because if the one-year T-bill is giving you a risk-free return of 4.6%, it becomes very difficult to justify investing in a company for some prospects of future growth. The opportunity we are seeing is, uh, you mentioned energy. We think we are very constructive on that sector. Because of geopolitical constraints and because of uh, OPEC limiting production, we feel there'll be supply constraints there. But the demand we see is continuing to skyrocket. You know, by 2045, we anticipate that the world economy is going to more than double, and the transition away from fossil fuel is going to take time. So for that reason, we think oil prices are headed higher, which is tremendously good for large oil companies. You mentioned about th there being a rally in that space. Uh, if you look at a stock like ExxonMobil, which is on our watch list, their break-even on oil is about $41 a barrel. So with oil trading at $75 a barrel, that's tremendously profitable for them. And that stock is up more than 70% year to date, but still is trading at less than nine times earnings, which is not very expensive and pays an attractive dividend. All right. And, and, and just out of curiosity, before we let you go, we have a few moments left, Adele. Is big tech a buy right now? So we do think that some of the big tech we are constructive on because we feel that here it's value disguised as growth. You know, if you look at a, another company on our watch list, Alphabet, that stock is down about 30% year to date and is trading at less than 19 times earnings. For us, that's more of a value play than a growth play. And here we have a company where the sum of the parts is greater than the whole, where they're doing extremely well in search, they're, do they're growing rapidly in cloud, and where companies like Netflix are just now trying to figure out how to monetize advertising. YouTube clocked in north of $7 billion in advertising revenue in the third quarter.